48 volts. I mean, how It's been hard, a long time how, that it's been at 12 volts, far too yeah, long. Yeah, 60 years. Yeah. So I've got a question for you. How difficult was it to move from 12 to 48? Because I know when the S came out, yeah. I wasn't, or the Plaid came out, I, I wasn't happy. I thought you were going to do it on that. I was looking for that big giant weight reduction and cutting all the wire and whatnot. But this one, you've got it in. So how, yeah. how difficult was it to, to get that to happen? Well, it's, it's very difficult to change the, the bus voltage from 12 to 48 because all of the peripheral items, everything that connects to yeah. it has to uh, interface at 48 volts or you've got to step down to 12 volts. Yeah. So, uh, you know, there are, there are hundreds of things that interface to the, the, the low voltage bus. Um, and that's everything from, you know, the electronics in the car, the, the window, yeah. the, the window motor, the uh, airbags, the, 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 you know, the, the, thing, the, the, the seat, Adjustment mode, everything, yeah, everything. is is set. The, the the headlamps, everything's set to 12 volts. Um, so the entire supply chain, um, the entire design infrastructure is set for 12 volts. This is why it's been stuck at this absurdly low number for a long time. Um, and I think, <clears throat> I mean, it's the it's people that uh, uh, know a little bit about electrical electrical engineering, um, you don't need to know a lot, but just a little bit, uh, will understand that. Uh, you, you you actually want a higher voltage in order to reduce the uh, re resistance losses. Okay. So, um, the 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 heating in any wire is the current uh, is I squared R. You know, yep. so it's uh, the, the 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 square of the current. So if you're trying to get a particular power rating through, then uh, as you are um, as you as you increase the voltage, uh, you can decrease the current to, uh, so that voltage times amperage uh, equals yeah. your power. So we'll, so to hold power constant, um, but the heating is is proportionate to the square of the current. So you want to raise the voltage in order to lower the current, thus lower the heating uh, in the wire. And the net effect being that you can have um, much uh, thinner wires. Um, then, uh, as as you raise the voltage, you can you can drop the the, the the thickness of the wire. So you can have much you can use much less. In a nutshell, you can use much less copper. Um, and the wire harness weighs much less yeah. as you raise the voltage. But you did even more because you went to the new um, bus system. And, um, you know, um, in the 80s, when I was still working for Ford, yeah. I did everything I could to try and get us to go to um, um, the, it was a bus system that uh, that did, that failed. And, um, and we couldn't get that to happen. And once it failed, that's it. We can never go back again. It's failed. It'll never work. It'll never work. But you guys made it work. And I heard a couple of different numbers, but somewhere between <clears throat> in in uh, in uh, percentage of weight and what sometimes something around seventy percent of the communication wire disappeared. Forty eight volt. Who who cares? It's yeah. gone. And this is another thing that um, you know multiplexing was. That's the name that it used to be called. But anyways, multiplexing was really good, but it was it was too slow. Yeah. Um, and you've got it to work. And I, I just, I maybe you could explain who who came up with it. When did you decide that you were going to go in that direction? Was it part of the forty eight volt discussion, or how did that work? Um, well, there's there's actually a couple of things happening. Uh, so besides forty eight volts, it's also moving to Ethernet. Um, right. Yeah. Uh, over CAN bus. Yep. So Ethernet just allows for a much higher data rate than um, the sort of the CAN bus, which is the, the sort of typical data bus on a car. Um, the um, you know one of the one of the effects of, of being able to of having a very high bandwidth bus is uh, is that you don't have to have as many point to point wires because you're not constrained by the data rate. So if if, if your data rate per wire is low as it is typically with CAN bus, you have to have many point to point wires. Whereas if um, if you have a very high data rate like Ethernet, then you can simply uh, attach to the bus and not worry about um, any kind of latency or, or packet loss or you know da data loss essentially. So it's um, so, so you need far fewer point-to-point -point wires. Um, so it, it's both going to uh, four times higher voltage, thus having thinner wires, and needing fewer wires because we have a much higher data rate bus now. I think, frankly, these things are pretty obvious. They're like it's, it's simply bringing cars to the, you know, the year the 21st century, um, yeah. because we've had Ethernet for a long time. Yeah. Um, there's, there's there's nothing that's really prevented 
the car industry from moving to a higher bus voltage uh, and a, a much a higher data rate system than, than CAN bus, which is a very old protocol. Um, and so I feel like actually what we're doing is we're, we're, we're kind of doing making the obvious moves. They seem very obvious to me, like as, a, as opposed to like some, you know, Eureka, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's not like, is it actually a breakthrough? Well, we're just trying to bring car electronics to, you know, the year 2023. Right. Uh, similar to what you'd have for, you know, in a laptop or, a, you know, any, any kind of computer. Well, without sounding like I'm sucking up, because I almost never do, um, I just think it's because of leadership. Um, I, I work with many different car companies. <clears throat> some of them big, some of them small. But to make a decision like that usually involves, number one, a bunch of MBAs, and number two, lawyers. And as soon as that comes into play, boom, <laughs> I don't care what sure. what engineer, if you haven't got a leader that's going to be, no, I don't care, just do it. And, uh, and yeah. that kind of an obvious idea to an engineer is totally oblivious to people who count beans and and um, and basically uh, try and make you do nothing, nothing new. Yeah. Anyway. I mean, I think it, 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 if, if, so, if somebody's going to, I believe it's important to be good at the, to have some good understanding of the field that you are leading. So uh, if, if you're leading, say, a technology company, you want to be, I think, good at engineering or reasonably good at engineering. Uh, you need to, uh, if you're, you know, leading a company which is sort of more marketing based, then you, I think being, being a skilled at marketing is, is, uh, is fine. But, um, you know, like you, you, you don't want the, you, you don't want your product to be um, something that you don't understand, essentially. So uh, there's a lot of technology in the car. So I think it's important to have an understanding of technology, of engineering, in order to make sensible decisions. Um, I mean, even for something, I think, as trivial as I squared R heating, uh, if you ask, I think there wouldn't be that many technology company CEOs who would know what that means. I would say zero, except for you. <laughs> I mean, there's maybe uh, a I mean, few. I think like Jensen Wong at uh, well, maybe, NVIDIA and a yeah, few others, yeah, you know, Maybe, would know. but at the end of the um, day, very, very few would know. 